Johnson. I'm the founder and the director of the St. Louis Center for Play Therapy Training. If you've never heard of us before, we provide play therapy training that you can apply toward your play therapy credentialing, if that's something you're working to achieve. Um, you can find out more about us and what we do at stlplaytherapy.com. But today I'm here with a play therapy tip I'd like to share with you. This tip came from my friend, proud to say she's my friend, and uh, my colleague, Liana Lowenstein. And um, if you're a play therapist, school counselor, who, or anyone who works with children utilizing play therapy techniques and strategies, um, you've probably heard of Liana. She has published numerous books on uh, techniques that are play-based to use with children, adolescents, and with families. And this was the, one of the first books she um, published called Creative Interventions for Troubled Children and Youth, full of activities that you can use. One of my favorites that I use frequently is um, based on the old traditional board game called Trouble. If you're not familiar with this game, it's been around for a really, really long time. You can usually pick it up at toy stores for around 10 to $14. If you shop during the um, Christmas holidays when games and toys are in abundance and there's lots of sales, I have seen these um, sometimes priced even a little bit under $10. So if it's something you can look into purchasing in the future and you're budget conscious, and who isn't, um, wait till they go on sale and you can get one really cheaply. It's a durable game. This particular one I've had, I've had for years and it's still all intact and it hasn't fallen apart. What's great about this is it has a die, but the die is contained in this bubble, so you don't ever have to worry about losing it. The premise of the game is that it's up to four players. You um, pop, push on the bubble and it rolls the die. So it's also a great thing for kids who, what, need to push and pump on something? Maybe they got a little aggression to get out? Um, I've seen children hit this pretty hard and they've never cracked it or broken it yet. Not yet anyway. Um, you have to roll a one or a six in order to get one of your little markers out of your home spot and to start around the board. Um, if you roll a six, you get to roll again. If you land on somebody else's spot, um, you can um, move them back to home and they have to start over. So you want to get all of your little markers all the way around the game board and back up into your um, finished spot, and then you would win. What I like about this game, what Liana did with it, was she added a therapeutic twist to it. And um, I've adapted that somewhat. I like play therapy techniques, and I like to take them and make them fit the population that I'm working with. So I'm always adapting them, always changing them, but always giving credit where credit is due to the person who originated the idea. So in her book, if you would purchase this, and she has this um, game uh, detailed out in there as how she uses it, she talks about how when kids get into troubling situations, maybe they make bad choices, and they get caught up in situations that they have no control over. That sometimes the feelings that are associated with those troubling situations might elicit feelings of guilt or shame. So um, she has situational cards that are printed in the book that you can copy out and use with this game. So for instance, when I play the game, I use some of her question cards, but I've also come up with some of my own. And so there are usually little scenarios where a child might find themselves in a troubling situation. And if they roll, say, a number five, Whenever you roll five, you might draw one of those situational cards. We'll read it out loud, and we'll talk about it, and we'll process it. For instance, um, your brother got into your room, and he broke one of your favorite toys. And now you're really angry, so what can you do about that? Or what should your brother do when he broke one of your toys? So not that there's right or wrong answers to those situations, but it's a good way to gauge their problem-solving abilities and what they would do or what they could do in those situations. So I've used this one-on-one -on -one with children in individual play therapy. I've used it in a group setting. Of course, you're gonna be limited since you only have four, pe four, um, four people to be able to play. So let's say you were doing it in a group with um, eight children. You could pair them up into teams of two each and they could play together as a team. I've used it in family therapy and tailored the situational cards to problems that are specific to that family or just to families in general to help come up, help them come up with ways that they would solve those kinds of problems. And so in that situation, we might pair them up a parent and a child or an older child with a younger child if we have more than four players. So that way you can adapt it and use it um, with as many people as might be present at that time. So it's a great way to take a traditional game, like I mentioned earlier, add a therapeutic element to it or a therapeutic twist and utilize it in your practice. So if you use this game or you've used other traditional games, 
and um, you've had great success when making them into a therapeutic tool. I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at stlplanttherapy.com and on my webpage you can find links to connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I'm everywhere. If there's social media out there and a great way for play therapists to connect, I'm there as well. So um, connect with me. Let's hear how you use it and we can learn from one another. I look forward to hearing from you.